we have a quorum, right? I see five of you. All right. Good evening. It's March 4th, 2021 at 7.01 p.m. I would like to call the regular meeting of the Royal of Parks, Recreation, and Senior Services Advisory Board to order. Due to the virtual nature of this meeting, all voting and attendance will be done through roll call. Going through as everyone appears on my screen, please state I and where you are broadcasting from. Starting with Mike Rapinski. Hi, um, I am in Royal Oak. Joe? Hi, I'm in Waterford, Michigan. Okay, the other Joe? Hi, I am in Royal Oak, Michigan. Maya? I'm in Macomb, Michigan. Okay, Commissioner Macy? Uh, I'm in, I, I'm in Royal Oak, Michigan. And I, I am Sarah Kininger, and I am in Royal Oak. Moving on to the next agenda item. Ms. Is Sarah, yes. you missed jo Mr. John and Mr. Aaron. There, mm -hmm. okay. Oh. Yes, John? Uh, present in Clarkson. Mr. Aaron? Present in Royal Oak. Okay. Moving on to the next agenda item is approval of the meeting minutes from February 4th sent to us by John. I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the minutes. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion on that most motion? All right, I'll call for a vote in the order everyone appears on my screen. Commissioner Macy. Yes. Maya. Yes. Joe V. Yes. Mr. Rapinski. Yes. And I, the motion passes unanimously. So item number three, or number four, it's so off script job, you can't mess up the numbers for me. So item number four is city commission comments from Commissioner Macy. I don't have too much today. We got a lot on this agenda that I think is gonna cover. Um, I was, John, are we gonna say anything about Normandy Oaks anywhere? Oh, not Normandy Oaks, the downtown park, you know what I mean? No? Yeah, We are. Okay. report. Okay, um, and then the, oh, the, so the only other thing I wanted to talk about from city commission meetings is that we are um, on the in the process of hiring a new city attorney. So uh, we've had an interim city attorney for some time now, and we now have a slate of candidates. And we selected, I think, six that we're going to be doing in-person interviews on uh, with, and that will be taking place. Oh, goodness, I don't remember what is taking place actually. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't remember what's taking place, but I will look and say that later. Um, anyway, it's going to be like an all, it's, it's going to be an all day, I think it's actually the 15th, March 15th, um, of interviews starting from like 3 p.m. to like 10 p.m. And everyone is welcome to come watch. So if you are interested in the hiring process for a city attorney, that could be interesting. That's all I have. I think everything else we're going to be discussing in the rest of the agenda. Awesome. Thank you for the comments, Commissioner Macy. Does anyone have any questions or comments? Commissioner Macy. All right, thank you again, Commissioner Macy. Moving on to the next agenda item, which is public comment. Just like in our in-person meetings, we limit speaking time to three minutes, which is the standard for all city or commission meetings. Please use the raise hand icon. Then we will click on you and we'll be able to bring you off mute to address the board. All right, sir, it's I like, got uh, one, one, one attendee, uh, Janice Wagman. I'm going to allow her to talk. Okay, great. Thank you. Welcome, Janice. Uh, Thank you. Um, Janice, you are on mute. I got kicked off and back in again. Okay. Um, well, welcome so back. Two, two things. <laughs> Thank you. Two things to discuss. Number one, John's abs. No, not really. I'm kidding about that one. <laughs> but but um, I just wanted to comment on this quarter's Insight Magazine and how thrilled I was with it. Um, the the job that, that Judy Davids especially did in, in highlighting seniors in it. Uh, there was a lot of work that went into putting that together. I met with her a couple of times and I really appreciated that she was reaching out to the community for some input on that also. So bravo and uh, thanks to uh, the city for, and the, you know, your, your, your work on highlighting seniors and, and bringing them to the forefront. 
That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Janice. Any other public comment, John? That is it. All right. Then public comment is closed. Sarah, can I? Um, I cannot locate my copy of the agenda in my emails. John, could you send me a new copy? Yeah, give me a second. Yeah, I think I have one. I can put it in this chat for you. Good chat. Hold on. Okay, good. It's only so much I can do. Yeah, Mike, it's in the chat. You see it in the chat, Mike? You can click on it. It should take you there. I can go through what business will be on the agenda just in the interim while you're pulling that out, Mike. We'll be talking about the golf course, the football club, we, appointment to the downtown park task force, senior outreach, arts in the parks, and staff report. So we lost Mike, but we'll keep going. Since Joe is anxious to, the other Joe, Joe S, is anxious to give us his update on the golf course. So I'm gonna start with business of Royal Oak Golf Course. Good evening, everyone. How's everybody doing tonight? Um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Joe Spadafore. I am one of the owners of the management company that runs the Royal Oak Golf Course for the city of Royal Oak. Uh, they believe this will be our 14th season with you guys. Um, and this was probably our most challenging season. <laughs> um, actually, uh, it was just a hectic year, not knowing what was going to happen. I, we did, I, me and my staff did a great job with uh, battling this terrible virus. Um, I can honestly say that I, we, our, the staff and everybody was clean all year. Nobody contracted this disease. None of our members that I know of had it. Um, we did a phenomenal job compared to other golf courses in the way that we went about cleaning everything. Uh, before you got on the carts, after you got on the carts, cleaned them and washed them. And um, it, it was challenging. Um, our rounds were up about 25% because, of course, as everybody knows, there was nothing else that you could do. It was golf or stay home. Um, so I, I kind of uh, like our governor because she took care of us and didn't uh, uh, boycott us or, you know, um, ban us like bowling alleys and some of the other ones. I guess it's just the luck of the draw. Um, our food service and our beer and wine struggled because we did not open the kitchen just from the fact that it was just, uh, it's a small, it's a small uh, restaurant. If you haven't been out there, there our seating capacity is uh, 25, excuse me, 75. So 10% of that um, was, you know, 15 people. And when you've got about 60 or 70 people that are there every night, how do you pick the 10 people that you let in? So we utilized with the help of Parks and Rec and Aaron and John, a lot of picnic tables um, and a lot of stuff was done outside. But being that it was, everybody was really, really afraid of this virus and they didn't want to stick around and I really don't blame them. Um, so that we kind of struggled in that area a little bit, but it wasn't as bad as I, I make it out to be. I mean, you know, with golf being up probably about 25%, I think we pretty much broke even on the beer and wine. And uh, we, we, we struggled in the food because we just didn't uh, prepare a lot of food. We, we made it really simple to get them in and out um, fast. The golf course was in tremendous shape. Um, no complaints there. Um, I believe that John probably had no complaints for the, the golf course anyways, for maybe the, you know, the first time ever, I know there was a lot of complaints with the netting and the headaches with that, but that was, you know, out of either one of our controls. So, um, you know, when you tell somebody that you're going to put up netting, they expect it to be put up the day after you tell them and they don't understand that, you know, it's all weather related, it's money related, it's time related. They're coming from Arizona, but the netting is all up and, Hopefully those, those complaints are no longer going to be around. Um, staff and everybody, everybody returned. I have a great staff. I have a lot of seniors. Um, most of my staff has been with me um, probably the 13, 14 years that I've been there. I, a couple of people have come from um, 
Stony Creek where I was at before. So I've got a couple guys that have been with me for the, the 30 years that I've been in this business. Um, we're looking for, forward to another good year because I have a feeling that people are going to be afraid to go to, to gyms and, you know, and, and bars and stuff like that. But with the fact that she's opening up things a little bit more, I think that the food side uh, will be able to, um, to benefit from that. We're planning on possibly putting up a tent um, so that we, we're going to give them the opportunity to, to do something outside as well as inside. Um, so just more options trying to, uh, we have a lot, a lot of new golfers. Um, that is one of the other challenges. Um, people that don't know how to play golf are coming up. But um, if, 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 you, if, you, if you take the time and, and explain it to them, it, it works out really good. We had a few issues, not a whole heck of a lot. Um, but a lot of new golfers, a lot more women golfing, which is great. Um, a lot more just new faces. Um, they want to come in and play nine holes. They don't want to go someplace and be there for five or six hours and worry about, you know, being around a bunch of people. So they, you know, Royal Oak really, we really benefit from benefit from that. And, uh, I was really happy with the season. So in a nutshell, that's basically it. Um, if you have any questions or anything you'd like to ask me, um, this is a little different for me. I'm this is my first zoom meeting. So I usually just put them all off. So, um, I'm usually like to answer questions instead of give you guys, uh, the info. So, but, uh, um, I was happy with the season. I know we didn't get, we opened early in March. Um, we had a long, and then we were closed down for, I believe we were closed down for two weeks. She closed it down for a couple of weeks and then we weren't allowed to use carts for a couple more weeks. I can honestly tell you that having the cart pass increased our revenue 40 or $50,000. I mean, it's just money that when we didn't have the cart pass, we didn't, you know, and Mike, Mike plays on Mondays. He can tell you um, in the years past, we went, I went ahead carts out until, you know, late, maybe if I'm lucky by June 1st this year, March, and then the governor said no carts, so we pulled them in for a couple, couple weeks, and then we let them out again. And I'm out of carts every day. We have people waiting for carts because we're busy, and we're gonna have to probably invest in some new carts. We did invest in some more equipment, um, a uh, fifty-five thousand dollar rough mower. Um, so that's a, a big hit for us, and uh, a couple new carts. Uh, that's about it. I can't think of anything else that I'm missing. Um, I, I don't think any complaints had got to the parks and rec board. And I kind of try to, to put them out before it gets to, to John and John, I'll, I'll call John and say, Hey, look, you're going to get a phone call. This is what happened. And as you know, there's three sides to the story, their side, my side, and then whatever side John wants to believe. So that's basically, <laughs> um, it was a good season. I was really happy. And, uh, Hopefully it won't be as stressful as next year or this year, but uh, hopefully it'll be as busy. Um, awesome. Thank you, Joe. And you, for the first Zoom meeting, doing a fantastic job. Thank Justina. you. This is like my 10th Zoom meeting. I didn't today, even so. mute myself once. That's pretty I good. know. So you guys might have muted me, but I didn't mute me. We tried, but we couldn't. This, so this, I'm is gonna my, pass. this is my second one today. Oh, I had like 10 today. So you're not even close yet, Mike, <laughs> but you're getting there. So it looks like Melanie has some questions for you. I do, but does Mike have one too? Well, just, uh, I know at, at the end of last season, Joe, we discussed um, the, the, the card pass that we did put in there. They're, they're a, a soft stone um, type of uh, product. And I don't know exactly what you call it, but uh, they were starting to, uh, I don't want to say deteriorate, but they were starting to get grooved from, you know, the, the cards being used on them. Uh, do, is there going to be some extra maintenance required to get those back up to speed? Uh, yeah, we did some dragging of them in the late fall. The, the, the problem that we had is that, and this is no fault to John or Aaron, but when Greg was still here and it was Greg's last year and some things got, didn't get done that were supposed to get done. Stockpiling of the slag was supposed to be left. Um, I'm not a big fan of the company that was hired, but uh, they, they took the slag and 
it, it wasn't left with us. Um, we actually have some cracks and stuff that are in the cart pass and John and me met with uh, the gentleman that did it. And uh, we are going to be taking care of those also, I guess, uh, engineering said that's basically something that just happens, um, you know, with cart pass, I kind of maybe disagree with that, but, uh, if you're engineering and, uh, you know, says that's what happens and that's what happens. I'm just trying to look out for the best, uh, interest of the city. And I think John is too, but yeah, they're, uh, most of the rut, they're all smooth now. It's, uh, um, but that's that stockpile that we really needed. We're going to have to get back in there and we discussed it with Aaron a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah, they're, uh, it's just the fact that we didn't do the asphalt all the way around. And that's just, you know, the golf course is a wet golf course. So when you start getting carts that you make them stay on the cart path, you're going to get those ruts. And there, some areas are better than others, but uh, we're in good shape right now. Melanie. Hey Joe, thanks for coming today. No problem. Um, Sounds like it did. A, sounds like it was a pretty good year, for, you know, in terms of golf. After all, um, I wonder. So when you said they're up twenty five percent, you're hoping to be up again. Like what? I'm just curious. Like what months were you specifically up? Like where are the kind of the areas of growth that you might have that were revealed by the pandemic when everybody, as you said, had nothing else to do? Like where where were those pieces that we could do more? Uh, May, June, July, August, September. Are all I mean, all of them. All huh? of them were up. Um, the fact that it was just new people now, you know, just, it's just amazing how, and I'm there every day and all the new faces and the ones that are coming back. Like I said, a lot of women, a lot of kids, a lot of kids getting dropped off. We became a daycare center, which is fine. We have, I didn't know that was an option. Please yeah, look for three extra tomorrow. Yep. What we do is if, if you're, if you can play golf and you can keep up with the group in front of you, I bring them, drop them off. That's fine. We have no issues with that. So Aaron, we do, put that in the next insight. <laughs> yeah, we have a, uh, and we do uh, a, a thing with the golf association of Michigan, which they pick up half the fees for the kids. So oh. in other words, we charge the kids $5. The golf association then sends us $5 for every kid we have that come out and play. So we have a lot of, a lot of, a lot of new kids and a lot of women and it's growing, you know, they, they like it. They're bringing out a, a friend, a lot of new equipment. You know, we didn't sell a lot of equipment, but uh, a lot of places you, you can't get anything to begin with. So, you know, like for instance, pull carts at the beginning of the year, you couldn't get a pull cart. You couldn't go buy mm -hmm. a pull cart until uh, the end of August. Mm -hmm. If we would have thought about this, you know, pandemic and I thought I spent all my money on pull carts, I'd be retired by now. I would have been <laughs> selling for triple. So that's where the growth is. A lot of people riding so cart revenue up with having the cart pass. Great weather. We had a pretty good, good year weather wise. Also, not a lot of rainouts. Um, I don't even know, Mike. You guys were only rained out one time, I think, early, maybe. But uh, I think maybe once, yeah. And and you know when we get those heavy rains, there's days that even if we just do cart pass, you, you, you we have a hard time letting carts mm -hmm. out. So we weather and new golfers being introduced to the sport. Okay, so that leads to my next question, which is it sounds like it was so busy that almost you might be at capacity. Is that, is it true? Like, is it, I saw some, someone on Facebook today was saying, hey, where can I get into a men's golf league if everything seems to be full? Like, are, is, there, is there room for growth now or are you pretty much there's always as many as There's you can? always room for growth. Um, there's always down times. Our, our, our main time at, at Royal Oak is, from seven o'clock in the morning till 11 and then it, between 12 and like two, it, it kind of is hit or miss. But then from three on we're book solid. We do have leagues. Um, a lot of leagues are, are like um, company leagues. So they, you know, they, they come out already formed and just like that. I saw that post today too. As a matter of fact, I have to reach out to them because I have openings. I'll get on there and I'll say, we have an opening in this league if you're interested and I'll hook them up with the, the person that runs the league, but uh, our leagues are all filled up. But John's trying to get a league in. I can't even get another league in for the city because I, I do like, we have openings in the mornings and on Fridays, but uh, the rest of the days are, and we've always been a league golf course. So Monday through Thursday, we've always been pretty busy with our leagues. 
um, Thursday mornings and Friday mornings, we run uh, senior leagues for the city of Royal Oak. We have a city of Royal Oak uh, senior league on Fridays, which we have about 30 golfers. And then every other Thursday, we do a scramble for the seniors of Royal Oak. So we can get anywhere from 30 to 50 people on just depending on who wants to play that other, you know, every other week. And it, it's really um, been, those things were full this year. The senior leagues were a little bit down because I think they were a little bit more afraid of coming out, you know, more younger people weren't so scared to come out. So that's where I think a lot of our growth was. Okay. And then I just, I wanted to say that maybe here you talk a little bit about um, just for our newer members for Joe and Maya who maybe haven't been out there for a while. One thing that's been, there's been some parts of the golf course that have been a little bit of disrepair. You've heard the, uh, they didn't have cart paths and the parking lot was not in great shape. And so those are kind of infrastructure projects that have been in the past couple of years. But one thing that Joe would really like and Mike would really like is for us to look at the clubhouse, which also um, needs some pretty serious. Here, wait, this is a hug. Here's a hug for you. Thank you. <laughs> Um, yeah, our clubhouse is, uh, I think uh, we're just all here and there's not a, there's no public, but it's a, it's a mess. Um, we've put don't, a lot don't of, sit ne- don't sit near the windows in a rainstorm. <laughs> yeah. Well, we got the, John to got the roof fixed. So that was a big thing. And we fixed the roof every year. And this year it was just at the point where I said, John, can you get someone out here that, you know, to get it done right. And we did do that. We've talked about putting in a deck. Anybody that would like to come out, please come on out. Our clubhouse. I was going to propose maybe we hold another meeting there. So that's yeah. how we all saw it once before is that right. we, you know. It's yeah. just, it's, it was built in 1960. So, um, you know, it can only be painted and lit, lit up as, you know, so much. Um, it, it's not a, we have no storage, so we can't, we can't do a lot of outings and stuff because everything we cook, we cook, we have to order twice a week and it, we don't have any place to store anything. So that's, you know, most places they order, you know, a month ahead of time and they can store stuff. I have to order beer two or three times a week. Cause I don't even, I have a closet or my office and I can't keep beer in my office because it tends to disappear every once in a while. So <laughs> we don't like to keep it in there, but uh yeah, it, you know, even talked about seeing, they were talking about maybe doing a, a new senior center and, and, you know, combining it over there and having it upstairs or what, you know, but uh, Red Oaks, Birmingham, Southfield, everybody around you has put in a new clubhouse or has updated the clubhouse tremendously. Whatever, nothing against the city or anything, but since I've been there, um, it's our responsibility John helps us out. You guys helped us out with the roof and he put in a uh, air conditioner um, a couple, three years ago. Other than that, everything that's been done there has been done by us. When we took it over, there was not a table. There was not a chair. There was no kitchen. Everything we brought in at our own expense. Um, And we fixed it up. It was a mess. And it's just, you know, it's still not the way we'd like to see, but I understand those things cost money and, uh, but uh, we'll do the best we can. I mean, if if you put up a tent, where would you put it? You know where they put the tent for the uh, uh, Christmas classic? Yeah. Down there next to the first tee. Right there. Or I'm afraid to put it next to the ninth because of the golf balls coming over. So we would probably put it, unless we put it where you guys usually sit, put one there and then have sides on it. But then it kind of defeats the purpose when it's hot out. So, um, you know, we liked, we talked about a, and I gave John some plans. I don't know if it's where it's at, but uh, a deck. Um, I had a couple of prices for decking that, you know, back there, a deck would be just awesome. Um, but we talked about that, a deck, a, a deck would be ideal, but if not short of a deck, just leveling that area outside that side door, and then just doing some type of wood chip or five bar or some type of uh, right. you know cover on that, but level it instead of being on an angle. Right. You know, after after my second beer, I start rolling down the hill. <laughs> and that's the big question. That's one question that I get asked every week is the fact that, and I I kind of deferred it from you guys because uh, 
people say they're going to go to the city council and this and that, but they, you know, my, my golfers never do. Where is the rest of the money? We were promised $760,000 and I, we only put in $300,000 of cart pass. And I said, well, I tell them it's the city's money. It's, they could do whatever they want with it. It's, you know, I don't, it's not sitting in a bank account somewhere. I don't know. Um, you know, but I'm, I'm shocked that you guys don't. And I think that being that everybody's on zoom and stuff like that, they're not going to the city council meetings. So you, you're not getting that group of people that, but once it opens up, I think that, you know, that was one of the big questions that uh, I get asked all the time. And I kind of just tell them it, it's, it's in the works. Yes, Joe. All right, I had to unmute myself. Um, not much of a golfer. I am a beer drinker, though, so I will be there as All right. much as I can this summer. Um, my son got a set of golf clubs for Christmas, and he's looking to get out and hit the links this summer, and I'd love to take him. Just curious, what do you guys charge for a round of golf, and how does that compare to some of the local courses in the area? Well, like I told you, you go on the Golf Association of Michigan, sign him up as long as he's under 17. When he comes out to play golf, it'll cost him $5. If you go someplace else like Red Oaks, Red Oaks, I believe is 12. Um, don't hold me to it. Um, I know Rackham is, they don't have a really good junior thing. Um, I believe they're like 17. You can't even go to Birmingham because if you don't live in the city, they'll, you, you can't get in there. And then Mike, I'll tell you, I'm a, I'm a big uh, fan of having kids out there. Um, we've done the, the junior golf program for years. Um, I've got hundreds of golf clubs up in my cart barn that people donate to us all the time. When I see kids come out that don't have anything nice, I pull them to this and say, come here. First off, of course, I ask their parents and, uh, here, here's a couple clubs. Um, and it's just great to see their look on their face when they're getting something that's better than what they have. Um, so basically, yeah, it's $5. Like I said, go on the golf association of Michigan and sign them up and they'll get a card. And they even like it because they feel like they have their first credit card. They come yeah. out, and they hand us the card, and we run it through. What, um, what about what about for adults? Or what's the price, and is that competitive with other courses? Yes. Uh, now we have we're a little different than other places. We have what we call a, a being that it's a Royal Oak Golf Course. When we took it over, we came up with they were doing it a little bit before us, but we have a membership for the golf course, which. If you are join the golf course, you save $5 on every round you play. If you're a resident of Royal Oak, that membership fee is cheaper. So I believe to join the golf course, it's $40 if you live in Royal Oak. If you don't live in Royal Oak, I believe it's $70. What that does, it saves you $5 every time you play. So if you came out, John joined the club, he lives in Royal Oak, um, even though he doesn't, but it's $40. And after 10 rounds, to make that membership almost free, we give you a free round. So if you play 10 times, saves you $5 every time. So that's $50. And then we give you another $15 round after that. So compared to everybody else, our prices are, if not lower, the same as, uh, as everybody. I believe that we're lower than Red Oaks. I know we're lower than Rackham. I don't think we're lower than Southfield. Um, we are definitely lower than Birmingham. Uh, we're lower than the Troy court, way lower than the Troy courses. Any other questions for Joe? All right. Well, I want to thank you for coming for the update and congratulations on such successful first zoom call. Yeah. Thank you. This is easy. Um, yeah. Like I said, please, uh, Get just get my cell phone from John or even Mike. If you want to come out and take a look, I'll give you a tour. If you just want to come out and have a beer, please come out. I, I don't uh, get a lot of commissioners. I don't get a lot of uh, parks and rec. And I know you guys are busy, but my doors are always open for you to come out, and take a look and sit around and just watch how we do things because I think you will be impressed. Um, of course, you'll come out now and someone will go crazy, but hopefully not. Yep. <laughs> it's all about it's all Joe's about door is always open but he might be out on the lawnmower out cutting the fairways if you know i'm having a bad day i'm out mowing because nobody can bother me when i'm out so i, I all right my place died thank you very much you guys have a great evening thank, thank you for the open invitation yes
Take care. Take care. Have a great night. Yep. Mike, you should right. take us out there and teach us how to golf. Right? That would be the blind leading the blind. <laughs> so we might need more nets if I get out there, I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Moving on to the Royal Oak Football Club. Is this like real football or is this soccer? This is so, soccer. So Sarah, Sarah yeah. this is soccer. Um, I made a mistake. The, the oh. person representative from the soccer club is actually going to make next meetings. I thought they're going to be oh. on. So. Sorry. I did not realize that. I apologize, everyone. No, no problem. I think we can skip the appointment to the downtown park task force as well, since I specifically stepped down to allow someone else on that's not on this call. So we'll, we'll table that till next time. Do we need someone for the meeting, John? Amy, is there any meetings coming up that we need people? Um, for, oh, for the downtown down park task force? No. Okay. Well, then let's table that one as well. I guess I should have read the agenda and asked if we wanted to vote on moving some stuff around, but here we are. <laughs> All right, <laughs> moving right along and my loose Robert's rules of meeting following. <laughs> Senior outreach. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, turn us over to Commissioner Macy. She had a lot of good stuff to uh, talk about. Actually, awesome. I'm, just, I'm just passing on what Judy Davids did. Um, so John, should we screen share it? Do you have the, do you have what Judy sent or could I screen share it? Um, I'm gonna see if I can maybe make you a host here. Okay. Um, so as, as we heard in public comment, uh, the Insight Magazine is already out in door in uh, mailboxes and- You should be able to share now. Oh, great. Oh, look, there it is. Wait. Okay, can we see? Yeah. Okay. So um, it's out in mailboxes and there's some improvements and some additional senior focus. And so, I mean, Judy came up with this, just this entire plan. Uh, I think she was working with John. She also reached out to Janice um, to get some, you know, some community feedback as, I mean, as we know, Janice has, has like had some ideas and had some, um, you know, criticisms of how we've done it and some ways to move forward. And so we brought that into this and I think they did a great job putting this together. Um, so I'll just kind of walk you through it. Um, so this is, I mean, I, I think we all know what this, the point of this is, is we've been talking for a long time about how to continue to engage the seniors and not focus entirely on the tech ways that we tend to engage a lot of the rest of our residents. Um, because we, as we know, like not all seniors are as tech savvy and we need to have, we need to make sure that we're reaching some of these, some of our more, more vulnerable citizens, especially in times like this in the pandemic. So the Insight Magazine, which everybody should have and Sarah beautifully displayed um, is, is in mailboxes. And in addition, most of you probably don't know that a robocall went out from the mayor um, to seniors in the community, letting them know not only that the insight would be coming soon, but uh, that, that, that there were things dedicated to seniors in this magazine that they should pay attention to look at what all the look at what was offered and that there was a special um, offer for senior citizens um, in the magazine and uh, we were pretty pleased to get this actually because this is per Judy again. Um, you know, a lot of it's hard to get restaurants actually to give special deals right now because they're struggling. Uh, but the Rock on Third agreed to do this 10% off meals on Tuesdays for seniors. So, um, and this is something that they she wants to have be ongoing. So, in addition to having, you know, this uh, new material for seniors, like we always have had, we've always had plenty of recreation information and plenty of, you know, just. Um, like standard city information about services and resources by giving some of the more targeted things out and then continuing to do a robocall as needed to let to let people know that these things are coming and also to try to get more senior specific um, offers that kind of uh, invite them to look inside a little bit more than they maybe otherwise would. Um, also, Sarah, both sides have a um, front cover, front cover. So the, yeah, you see that that's the front, oh, wait, I think actually I have it here too. Um, and then there's five things every Royal Oak resident over age 65 should know. Um, so just like just a more engaging and letting them know that this is not, you know, it's just not some magazine that appears. It is actually for residents and specifically has a lot of information for seniors. Um, it did not say, see, it says Royal Oak seniors should know. So we did, we took the age limit off seniors. So apparently okay. if you want to identify as a senior at 50, you can't now. 
Yeah, well, I think, I mean, our, but most of the things in there are for 55 plus, don't they say? Commissioner Macy, we took the, we took the age, um, the ages out uh, because there's a lot of programs that say 55 and up, 60 and up, 65 and up. So um, each program has variable ages. So we just took the ages out for everything. Yeah, that was smart. Cool. That was smart. Um, Okay, and then, yeah, and then again about the robocall, which is only $200. So it seems like we can do that for a lot of these things that we want to push out. And I know we've heard there's problems. This doesn't, it's not universal. We don't catch everybody with that, but it is just one more method in this um, toolkit. Um, okay, and then this is something that I think we talked about at the last meeting that came out of strategic planning um, that I think John had already, was already kind of on this path as well. Um, about having like a call-in number that would, in addition to being able to have resources attached to it, would have like kind of a city newsletter or information so that people who weren't getting the tech, um, weren't getting it through, the, through Facebook or through social media could proactively reach out and get this information. And so Judy put together this great, um, you know, five things you should know about what's going on, what's going on in Royal Oak, which she felt like, you know, five things would uh, hit some of the highlights, but also get some things that are maybe ongoing that just don't get highlighted every week. So it's not always just the, the you know, the city newsletter, it's going to be things that are senior specific um, and city specific that could be useful. Um, and Judy and I had also, also talked about, um, in addition to this, like, so she, she recorded the first one, but trying to uh, incorporate some of our high school classes, like there's a, like a, I can't remember, it's not film and video, but it's some sort of class like that where they could, they, she's already working with them on some other, some PSAs for, for seniors and I think for other um, Royal Oak needs and that they could be the ones that do the recording. So it'd be like, you know, practice for them, but also a nice to hear, you know, a young voice that changes that do, doing every week. Um, and, in, and part of this, these five things you should know will be some of the senior PSAs, public service announcements that would be airing on Rock. Um, so as we talked about, like having them in certain, certain times of the week, um, and then also in case you, if you ever have that channel on, like there's just constant sort of ads in the background, I mean ads about city services, and this would be some of the rotations for that. Okay, and then Civic Ready. So this is something that already exists, but it's like, a, it's the citywide notification system. So you can sign up for an email, text or phone call and, and or phone call um, when there's like a city emergency. And this really comes basically through the police department. So it's, it's really for more emergency things, but it includes snow emergencies. And so we're talking about making sure that people are signed up for this so that, you know, we always have concerns when people don't know that this is coming. Um, and don't know who they can reach out to if they have a they have an issue. So um, making it a priority to put the word out about Civic Ready so that seniors are signing up for that and getting that information when they need it. Let's see more on this. It's the insight. And then also like not forgetting Facebook. Like there are seniors who are on who are on Facebook, but I think. Did Sarah point this out last time that a lot of people, you know, maybe they're on Facebook, but they're just connected to their family and their friends and they don't, they aren't keyed into the, um, you know, the Royal Oak um, Facebook pages that will, will provide a lot of the information about what's happening in the city. So <clears throat> starting out with five Facebook pages, you should be following now to help um, kind of guide that and let them get that information in their feed. Um, to for those who are on Facebook, but maybe not using it the way that many of the many other people were are already using it. Um, so yeah, I think that's it. I'm like so thrilled that I, I think it was Judy and John and Janice. Oh, all the J's working together here to put to, to put this together. Um, and I think it's I think it's really great and hits a lot of the points. I mean, it's already so. I mean, you know, Janice was saying she was pleased about the insight. We got an email. Um, the city commissioners got an email today from someone else who also said, I just got the Inside Magazine. I'm really thrilled with all the, like the senior focus on it. So anyway, pretty exciting. Um, and I'm, you know, glad that, grateful to our staff for getting this done. Amazing, thank you for sharing. Um, one thing that Janice brought up in a chat was the robocalls. How are we ensuring that the landlines are current? Because, you know, they could be disconnected or discontinued, I guess. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Okay. Do you know? I mean, I think, I mean, we get, we have numbers that, 
I don't know if we're getting them from the county or if we have them from our own like voting records. That's a good question. I'm not sure. Okay. Aaron, are yeah, you going I to say that? I mean, there will be us. some that fall through the, the, the cracks, cracks. some of those, but we're doing our best to just blanket coverage. So. Awesome. I think that's great. Um, the question I had is, I also know that the senior center puts together a newsletter. Is it, are we going to try to push them towards the insight so there's a one-stop shop or are we gonna continue with the two newsletters because they have different information? Senior newsletter comes out pretty much every month. This insight comes out in quarters. So the newsletter is actually, um, as far as time frame goes, is probably a little bit more current just because it comes out every month and it outlays everything that the senior center is doing for the following months. Um, okay. The insight is more of encompasses everything. So we have the classes that are going on uh, for the upcoming season. We have um, information, general information that you know, every resident should probably know. Um, HUD housing ads are in there. Um, you know, leaf pickup right. collection examples. So like, you know, major important uh, information that comes up in each season is, is put in the insight. So I guess where I'm headed with this is do, does it make sense that one of our insights to include that there is a senior newsletter that can be delivered and like starting to use that? I mean, I'm just trying to help generate some content curation. Like I think as these resources become available or are available, like the more we can use this in multiple channels to make those things aware, um, you know, it's online. It's, Janice is letting me know it's online and it can be delivered to their house. So I think that would be a nice, way to put in the five things you know or something like that just so that they're again creating more awareness around some of those resources and yeah. what's available to your point it's more up to date for sure I like, that, no. I like that idea about having like the you know we have the five things phone call but also the five right. things in the insight and i think that's a great thing to throw in there like did you know there's a senior newsletter that comes out monthly can be accessed online or you can call here to have it delivered to your house yep Yes, Maya. I had, sure. wait, I had a question for Commissioner Macy. Um, in our, um, not this meeting, but in January, when we were talking about the teen and tech committee, is that for seniors teens or is that for um, seniors to get clarification on that? So I don't know if I to look at the question, but the, uh, the, um, I mean, what we've been talking about, and you know, we had we had that meeting with Ms. Rimel last week about was having teens who are available to help to help seniors work on tech um, technology. So it's not part of this senior outreach necessarily. It's like a separate program. Um, so, yeah, I do have an update on that too. Is it on, on the agenda? It is now. Just go ahead and why don't you just include it in your senior outreach? Okay. So, um, so we're very fluid in this group, you know? <laughs> so Ms. Ms. Reimold, who's an assistant principal at the, uh, at Royal Oak High School and ha is, um, she's, you know, she's the leader of several of these store student organizations and she used to be, I think like the technology person there. So she's like interested in tech and she's got, um, you know, really interested in, um, equity and access particularly. So we met to talk about this idea um, and she was pretty excited about it. I mean, she had the questions that we had talked about too, like about safety for on both sides um, and how it would be monitored, how we'd be able to start this um, in the remote environment. Like how do you get someone to teach them about tech if they have to be on the tech to do it? Um, and so I think I, I think she's really interested in continuing. She, um, we, she came up with a list of um, student orgs that she thinks would be this would be a good fit for and sent us the teacher contacts for those orgs to reach out to and see if we could um, push forward and um, we also talked at, this was her idea about um, making it for uh, vaccinations so you maybe have seen this there's been like a bunch of articles even this week about people across the country who have been um, like sort of set up these programs to connect people to um, ways to get ways to get on vaccine lists and that seemed, I, she said it and I was like, oh, that's a genius thing to do right now because that is something that could be fairly low tech to start, right? They could just, seniors could make a call and teens are, you know, they have access to all the information and it would be easy to package that and have them, you know, walk seniors through or help them with that. So um, 
again, there, there's that adds a new layer of issues about um, health information and medical information and how we share that. So, but she seemed inside excited and that seemed like a good way to get started too. When you're ready to pilot the low technology using technology, I'll give you my mom's number. <laughs> okay. She can be your pilot case. <laughs> All right, good. We'll need some, we'll need some pilots. Yes, for sure. Um, sounds like some great ideas. And I agree that like, I think there's a lot that can be done there. Um, so what were the next steps? Were you just waiting to kind of see where we are from like an opening up or? So we met last week with Ms. Reimold and okay. um, this is the first week that the they're back in class. So we okay. agreed that this was maybe not the best week to be reaching out to teachers and asking them to do something brand new. So okay. we're gonna we're gonna move on that but soon, but we just, not this week. Okay. And maybe it's something that we start to think about the plans in place and we start to tackle in the fall when things are a little more open and it's a little less stressful because not that it's not important to do now, but maybe we can do the vaccine piece or something like that for this school year. Totally agree. The vaccine piece makes sense now, but it, I think everyone is sort of looking to the having, be nice if this could be in a, in a location. Yeah, absolutely. Hi, Lola. I, she actually, oh, sorry. No, nope, that's okay. She actually got her um, vaccination today, her first shot today. At my that's area. exciting. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else around senior outreach? I guess one, one more thing. Um, okay. So this is again sort of outside of the city, but remember we had talked about this, this like uh, reaching out to and having connecting to seniors just to like check-ins. Mm -hmm. And there was someone, so I'm, we're still continuing to work with this woman and we both talked to some outside people are trying to gather ideas and um, she's working on coming up with a name. She started out with Heart to Heart, uh, which I think is nice, but anyway, throwing it out there for anybody else to have ideas because there's quite a few Heart to Hearts out there. So we're seeing if we can brainstorm off of that. But um, I, I mean, I don't think that's going to be because of all the complications with doing that. I think that's going to be like a nonprofit separate from this, but just, just an update for the, for the board. Awesome. Thank you. Any other senior related? <laughs> we'll just make this our senior section of the meeting. Any other senior related items? John, I promise I will figure out how to vote and do all the right stuff with the agenda for next time. Tim didn't do that in the meeting I watched. So <laughs> I'm learning. All right, art in the parks. Uh, yeah, so I, in previous um, board meetings, there's a lot of been discussion about uh, art in the park. Mm -hmm. um, I know for one, um, I'll be, the department will be running a art contest for our art fair. Oh, cool. um, for students. And then um, I believe there is a work in progress art contest with the Commission of the Arts. So we weren't, we weren't, we weren't sure, John, if like, if, if, the, if these com contests were combined or not. So we were kind of, we, we weren't sure. But we did meet and talk about this. Um, yeah, Sarah, you want to talk? <laughs> no, I do not want to talk. Joe? I'm good. I think what we need to figure out is I don't think we should have multiple contests. So like maybe there's some opportunity to collaborate and work together on these things. I don't know if it's a one, one or all, one or nothing, all or nothing kind of thing. Yeah, I think there is room for that. I think for these particular plans that are sort of hatching out, I think it's okay to have two art contests. The more the, more the merrier as I see it. Uh, but to okay. your point, Sarah, for sure, um, I think they're, not just in this situation, but with other boards and various groups, that, that collaboration is something just across the board we should really push. Agreed. For. Okay. Um, so yeah, the one thing I would say is that this, I mean, the contest that I'm running, I mean, it's for my art fair, it's for the Recreation Department's art fair. Um, I know the Commission of Arts does a lot of things for the city uh, and they put on other events. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of to Aaron's point, there's a lot of ways we can kind of have something similar going on, but different entities put on. So I guess, John, um, a question I would have would be, um, if you're running an art fair, or if you're running an art contest for an art fair, uh, who are the potential applicants for your contest? And like, what, 
is there a theme of what your your contest is about? Because I know we were kind of specifically discussing something that would be showcasing the parks, right? Like we had a, a very specific focus of, you know, using students within the city of Royal Oak to showcase the parks. So I guess we, we just want to make sure that like your art contests weren't too similar, right? Yeah, so I mean, my art contest and uh, would essentially be open for el elementary school, middle school, and high school students. And they would be essentially three tiered. Um, so there would be a winner from elementary school, there'd be a winner from middle school, and there'd be a winner from high school. Um, they would have the opportunity to display their artwork at our art fair in July. Okay. Um, and I'm actually working with our arts council because they usually send out scholarships at the end of the year um, to high school students, but I'm working to see maybe we can, you know, instead of doing it that, we'll, we'll put some money as a cash prize for those winners uh, for this art fair. Um, and it's just kind of gets, you know, it, this art fair that the recreation department has put on is put on for 50 years. So um, it kind of just, the way for them to showcase and kind of get involved in the recreation department, get involved in the art fair and kind of just see, you know, what their peers are doing as well. Well, it, it sounds different, right? Like, I think that's like art for art. And we're, we're talking about like a centennial, you know, these are our parks, let's celebrate them. And instead of being like being at the art fair at the end, there'll be like a showcase in a park. So, right. Isn't that what we were talking about? Yeah, so I feel yeah like we talked about different. potentially setting something up at Normandy Oaks and really using that as kind of the highlight of it. So I think what we, the three of us who talked about it need to go back and do is probably put some different parameters around the type of art and kind of what our submissions might look like. And maybe we make it a little more, like we said, more focused on the park piece of it versus the, you know what I'm saying? Um, Sarah, I did some inquiries both with the Chamber of Commerce and with uh, Jason Gittinger, who's, mm -hmm. I don't know if he's still chair of the Commission for the Arts. Um, he was in the past. Uh, the, the Chamber was um, not interested. We are doing, you know, because it's not just the 100th anniversary of the city, it's 100th anniversary of the Chamber. And uh, their Chamber's doing their own thing. Uh, there was no interest in doing anything specifically for the parks. I kind of brought that up at the last Chamber board meeting. Um, Jason was also, um, I will say, less than warm on the idea uh, of partnering with the parks because they're just trying to do whatever they've done in the past. I don't know if they're going to have the pianos again or not. I know they have you know, their piano program and they have the murals and things like that going on. Uh, so long story short, uh, I receive very little um, interest from my inquiries. Okay. So I, I reached out to Jason, I think, I, and I worked on warming him up a little bit to it. And <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think he warmed up a little bit. So, cause he said, you know, they do support, um, you know, the arts and culture, I can't remember what he said, in, in, uh, in Royal Oak. And so, it, it, so I, was, I was sort of approaching him as a potential um, source for judges for this contest and i think that well, you're, you're easier to warm up to than i am <laughs> well I don't, I don't know about that but i, I did bat my eyelashes a bit no <laughs> <laughs> i would never right. try that myself so anyway um but getting back to to, to joe's uh you know initial idea last meeting um, you know, I, I think there's something there that, you know, for the, from the parks and rec board, I don't know, we, we should maybe still pursue that. What does everybody else think? Well, we on the subcommittee think so. <laughs> yeah, we, we had, I thought we had a really, a really great brainstorming session shortly after the last meeting and really kind of got some good ideas on paper about how we thought this could work. And, kind of just really retaining that original focus of, of showcasing the parks. Um, I, I guess we just wanted to make sure that that was something that we kind of had to go ahead from this group to continue to work on. And then we could um, by next meeting have, <clears throat> excuse me, like an official, maybe like flyer or advert or something that we could use to uh, market and advertise this to kind of get the word out to say, hey, 
you know, spring's coming. We want to, we want young artists out, you know, photographing or, or drawing in the parks or doing, you know, being inspired by the parks. And then they could submit something to us by, you know, maybe midsummer, 4th of July. And then late summer, we could have some kind of a round of judging. So, you know, that, that was kind of our main idea. I don't think we had anything necessarily set in stone other than wanting to show off the parks and having some kind of competition built around that. So I'll yes, just Aaron. add, um, no, I, I think, it, I guess to the question, is this something you guys should keep working on? I mean, I, I would encourage that, yes, as I said before, the more the merrier for this sort of thing. Um, and it kind of, so what, let's try something. I, I, I'm just all for trying and, and, and seeing what happens with it. I'll get to the park in a minute though. It might be okay if we conceptualize this a little bit more and then um, encourage people to go to the parks a little bit after the spring, because that'll be one of the items that I talk about in my uh, <laughs> staff report. That's why we put it to the end of <laughs> summer, Aaron. Aaron, that? that's why we moved it to the end of summer. We thought the parks would be in full bloom by then. Like we wouldn't have to worry about the mud. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. But I just think uh, in the taking pictures. Part. Yeah, and Sarah, Sarah, if I may add, you know, um, may add. Please, inc please include me in your guys' meetings because, you know, this contest, we need to run it through the recreation department and not necessarily through the Parks and Rec Advisory Board. Yeah, absolutely. Because um, even, even, even though you guys work hard, uh, everything's got to come through the departments. So, yeah. I think what we would like the opportunity to do is to solidify what we want to do before we propose it to you and put together the concept, vet the concept out a little bit more. So again, I think we want to ensure that we are not double tapping this talent and that we have both have objectives for what we're doing before we just run to similar contests. So I think we need that opportunity to kind of go back to the drawing board, make sure that we have that vetted out before we come back to you. But I think um, knowing that we wanna to continue to pursue this at least to a little further down the path, I think we have it fairly vetted out, but I think I would just wanna gut check that we feel it's gonna to need to be distinguishable between the two. And I think that's an important piece that it, you know, the Parks and Rec is running two contests for the similar audience. So like, how yeah. do we ensure that like, people aren't confused. And so I think that we need to have some differentiation. And so I would like to work opportunity to work with Mel and Joe to figure out what that differentiation looks like before we come back to you. And I, I think I, I think I would like some direction on if I, I guess, John, you know, you, you've, you've identified your target audience, which is going to be students within Royal Oak, you have this three tiered system. So how like, how do you advertise this contest? Is it going to be, you know, will this be on the website? Will this be on the newsletter? Will you be sending things out to schools? Again, you know, with the fact that kids are already going back to school in a, in a, in a somewhat school year that's in upheaval, you know, we don't want to be going to the art teachers and asking them to do two new things or going to the art students saying, do these two new things. So again, we, to, to Sarah's point, you know, how do we avoid that kind of double dipping in terms of what we're asking kids to do? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't think you, you can avoid the art students going to the art teachers. I mean, this would almost be like, a, I'm gonna call it a side job, right? You know, I mean, I, this shouldn't take away from anyone's schoolwork, you know? Uh, this is kind of just more for, you know, their hobby, their love for creating art and whatnot. Um, so, I mean, we'll put it on social media, we'll put it, we'll put it in through the schools um, and we'll see what we get, you know? Um, so we did our contest. We tried to do our contest last year. Obviously, it didn't work out because we canceled the art fair. <laughs> um, but, but that was going to be my question. So, in in past years, John, did did you guys run a similar competition, and how much turnout did you guys get? Last year was the first year we uh, sort of did it. Our contest um, each year in our art fair, we have like a crafts table where you know kids can come in and they can. Uh, I mean, it's I, it's almost like they just draw. Um, it's nothing too intense, uh, but last year, pre-COVID, we decided, you know, to try to change that up a little bit and um, kind of encourage them to enter in a contest and get them more involved in the art fair. Um, so that's where it kind of stemmed. Um, 
obviously it didn't go anywhere because it got canceled, but so we're kind of trying to, to pick that, pick that back up for this year. And, and you said that for your, your prizes, you would have some kind of a, like a, a monetary award or scholarship is what you guys are offering. Yeah, we would do a monetary award. Uh, the scholarships that they've done in the past have gone out to high school seniors that are majoring in art. Um, so with, with this contest in particular going out to, you know, elementary kids, uh, middle school kids, high school kids, you know, obviously uh, things change. You know, one day kids an astronaut, the next kid he's a firefighter. So um, probably won't be able to do much of a scholarship there, but we <laughs> do some sort of cash prize. Okay. So, I mean, I, I agree with there being some confusion, but I wonder, Joe, as I'm listening to this, like, you know, maybe the one that's, maybe we just focus on the centennial, I mean, could we run it through Judy David's, like, to make it like a Royal Oak contest versus the art fair contest? Or, I mean, John, what do you think? Do you want it to be like a recreation versus an art fair? Or do you think, you know? Well, if you, if you did commission the arts, that would be, to me, that would be more of like a citywide program. Right. So, right. So then it would make um, sense to have Judy do, do it, right? If you want to do something for the rec department, we can definitely do that as well, uh, for sure. Um, but I, I mean, I will say I have not worked with the Commissioner of Arts. Um, I don't have a contact. I believe James Crisan was the uh, point of contact for the Commissioner of Arts when he was still employed with the city. Um, so I, I think you can, I think you can hit two different markets. You can do a citywide art contest that can include everyone, right? Uh, you can also do it for middle school, um, in, uh, elementary, high school kids and do a centennial arch, art contest uh, for arts in the parks. Um, I think you can also probably do a generic art contest and have it as a citywide contest. Yeah, so I mean, it doesn't seem like it has to be recreation related, right? But it is parks related. So I, I think that's the confusing piece to me is that if we're focusing on parks, we can run it through Judy, we can do the Commissioner for the Arts, like we can have this be a collaboration that doesn't have to run through you if you're already running another art contest. Um, but like, you know, we were hoping to showcase it at a park and it's going to be highlighting our park. So, you, you know. I think communication with this board, you know, obviously having some idea of what, what to expect in the park, uh, this board having some information on that would be helpful. Um, but I think you're right, Commissioner Macy, that um, that would be probably the most logical route to, to work this contest that um, the Commission for the Arts wants to do. And, and yeah, I guess you're, the approach that you, you outline, I think, is the right one for that. And, and it doesn't, I don't think there needs to be a conflict that just because it's going through the Commission for the Arts, and it's park related that somehow it has to be wound up with parks and recognized board. It doesn't. Right. But it came out of this board. I mean, it's about the parks and it came out of this board. So it does seem related to this board. Sure. Um, uh, yeah, well, we can talk about it here too. I was just saying that the path of least resistance that it's easier to get a contest going up through the path that you described than I say, go for it. Otherwise, um, yeah, we can bring it back to the board. And I think, I think we're thinking about it too much. It's not that big of a problem, of not that big yeah. of a conflict, I don't think. I mean, it's just, it's just you guys create a contest, right? If you want to work with the Commissioner of Arts, work with the Commissioner of Arts. I mean, obviously, if it's posted on the city's Facebook page, you know, the Parks and Recreation is going to share it. So, I mean, <laughs> you know, it's, it's so kind of like an area. I think it's just thinking too much about it. Okay, one cl clarification. What, when is the art fair? July 10th and 11th. Okay. Yeah, and so I think I think the next kind of action step would be that our little subcommittee gets back together and kind of refocuses um, with with again that original goal in mind, which was just having a, a vehicle to showcase, you know, the, the parks, right, and the the centennial, and and just somehow uh, interweaving more arts into the parks and using arts to showcase the parks. So I think there's room uh, for both of those. I, I don't. I keep thinking this is like a Christopher Guest kind of like mock documentary with the competing art contest, but but I think you're absolutely right that there's just there is room for both of these to exist, and um, I think there's a big enough talent pool in this city with the residents and the students that you know kids are interested. They might they might put things in for both, right? I mean, every 
you know, kids are looking for scholarship money. If we, if we have, yeah. you know, a, a, an enticing gift basket that we can put together, right. I mean, that might be, you know, some of the kids that people get excited for. So I think there's room for both. Yeah. There's no competition. So, I mean, it's not like, you know, <laughs> I'm going to, you know, if you guys put in a thousand dollars, I'm going to put 1500 in. You know. <laughs> we have a competition to see who gets more people to participate yes. in our competition. An art, comp <laughs> art contest competition. I like it. Yeah. See? For sure. Yeah. All right. So I think... This is a round of golf. So. <laughs> Maybe they have to teach your son how to golf. How's that? Yeah. <laughs> Got All my right. attention. Bill. Yeah, exactly. All right. I think, um, so I heard from us that the three of us need to meet again and, and regroup to talk through this. So all right, the one and only, the most exciting part of the entire meeting, the staff report. Yay! John, can I kick it off? I got, I've just got one item. I think you might have the bulk of, of things. Go for, go for it. All right. Um, so uh, spring is upon us or near. It felt like spring a couple of days ago, and it's a reminder that spring is right around the corner and that um, people are already using our parks, but are really itching to use them in the spring. And we run into the same thing that we, well, a thing that we, a common theme in the spring is the park maintenance. Um, I wanna say that, you know, looking back at last year, it was a really good year uh, for <laughs> us. It looked, the parks looked pretty good early in the spring. There were some, some issues later on, but overall <clears throat> we had really cooperative weather, the precipit uh, precipitation totals and frequency uh, were just on our, on our side. We were really fortunate, considering as well that we didn't have uh, any seasonal laborer to help. Um, because of COVID, we were unsure of how to, how to manage that at that time. Um, but most of that, and that, so that was really pure luck. I mean, a lot of this, and, I, and it keeps getting repeated every year, and I'm sure the residents are, are so happy to hear it again. But the real determining factor in all of this, 100, you know, 95% of this is, is the weather. Um, because, you know, it's, not just how much it rains, but how frequently, when do the storms bring with it winds and damage and debris that all affects a just our cycle of how we do it, but also whether or not we can even access a park. Um, so there's a lot of things that we can't control with that. The vast majority of it we can't, but there's a few things that we can control. And we've been um, talking about that with staff over the winter. Um, and so we can control our methods, how we do it. Um, and, and, there's been talk in the past about equipment. Can't you use lighter equipment? You, you see these, these contractors uh, on smaller mowers whipping through parks. Um, we have those as well, outfitted with the special tires um, and they don't work. I mean, when you have wet ground, it's wet ground. Any tire, your foot's gonna imprint in it, let alone any kind of tractor or, or mower. So that's you know not really a solution. I mean, there, there are some tech things that we can look at, but overall, that's not the biggie. Um, I took some notes here. Yeah. Aaron, maybe you should really try charming Mother Nature. I mean, I should you're try. a very charming individual. So, like, maybe Thanks. you should just work that charm that Aaron will see what I can charm do on Mother Nature to see if you can really wrangle the weather in for us. I'll do what I can. You know, one okay. of the things that gets cut up all the time, too, is this can you just add, add dirt, add some earth to it, do some grading? Yes, that's possible. Actually, there's an area that we're thinking, and I can't think of the park's name. I want to say it's Exchange Park. The Mark Train Dog Park? Of course, yes. Exchange oh, yeah. Park. It's exchange, yeah. Yeah, and, and we do have, we we're talking about that one area. We have a, a piece of equipment on order that's an attachment for one of our pieces of equipment that would make that a lot easier to try to do our little potholing that we had talked about before where we fill it with porous stone. And, and that can address a limited area, a specific area. We couldn't do that over all of the parks. It's not really appropriate in every location. So the, the effect of that is limited, but we're willing to try it and, and we're going to this spring. Um, but not enough time to drain off any water potentially. Aaron, is there any plans for a citywide park cleanup day this year? Yes, and I, I didn't pull up, we, we talked about it. I, I will um, email that, you, that to you guys so that you can um, share it with your contacts as well. But yeah, we, we discussed that. In fact, before- yeah, the, Optimist, the Optimist Club asked me about it this morning because they know I'm on the parks board and I told them I'd bring it up. Actually, it was, I'm sorry, it was yesterday morning, but- um, yeah, as yes. soon as you know the do you know the date now or yeah, I just didn't want to I wanted to just finish my comments, then I'll look it up and, and then okay. I'll um, pass it on to you before we, we adjourn. Thank you. Um so landscape repair isn't always it. We can control kind of uh 
we've been talking with staff, we're just going to be flexible. And, I, and I've been trying to give pep talks uh, about that to say, you know, we get really comfortable doing things in our prescribed way. Uh, and, and a lot of times that was a derived from, from years of experience and it really works under most circumstances. Um, but we have to learn to become comfortable moving outside of that norm and taking opportunity where it's available. So for example, let's say we have it set that we would normally cut all of these parks in a given sequence and we get through most of the day and we're not gonna get that third park done just the way it worked out. Um, rather than saying, let's, let's do a different task that's not related to that. They, you know, they could move to another smaller park that maybe they can finish in the course of the day. And these are just simple things that, that you know, we're encouraging staff to think about. And so we're prepared to be flexible. And then also I'm, I'm trying to encourage everybody to, to, try to, to, to try things that might fail, to not be scared of failing it because we've been doing the same thing for a long time and it works. Uh, and I promise them I'm not gonna be upset with anybody if we try to be innovative and maybe we fall on our face but we tried and we know it doesn't work. Um, so we're gonna do that, but it's really here again, dependent on exactly how this weather comes. So we're gonna be trying to be flexible minute to minute this spring um, and hopefully we, we can uh, do well. Lastly, uh, our staff is the one thing we can control. And so the biggest thing is last year, even once we did uh, put advertisements out for seasonals, it was a difficult time getting seasonal labor. Even years prior to that, prior to COVID, it was increasingly difficult to get good help during the summertime. Uh, I recognize that uh, it's, it's a pay thing largely. So I, I uh, offered a substantial raise to, to folks to come on board this year. And that posting will either be up tomorrow or Monday. It'll be echoed on our Facebook pages and things. Uh, but if you know good 17 years or older uh, folks that why don't I we, do it? Yes, but we don't cut the dog park very much, Sarah. Oh, I know. Trust me. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's that. And so hopefully that will encourage people to come and we can build up our team really well. And, um, and we'll see where that takes us. So in terms of what's our plan for the spring, that's it. We'll see how it goes. Awesome. Uh, and that's all I had for my comments. I know that was the, the issue every spring. John, do you have anything else? Uh, yeah, so a um, couple items uh, at the downtown uh, park will be going to commission on uh, Monday, March 8th uh, for a recommendation to the city commission on um, approval of, I guess, the final design and um, funding, available funding options to uh, fund the whole park project, whether it be in uh, phase one or phase two or a uh, total park uh, project completion. Um, so be on the lookout for that uh, Monday. And um, so with the recent news of the governor lifting um, or loosening some restrictions to 50% capacity for indoor um, rec facilities and whatnot up to 300 people, uh, we are continuing our um, slow reopening so we are going to be offering more classes for the spring, uh, providing that people sign up and, and the, the numbers are good for them to run. And we are also starting to open up our uh, pickleball, indoor pickleball for the time being. Um, and what we're doing is a uh, very set time. Usually they are all on a walk-in basis, but we won't, we're still not doing any walk-ins, but at least these pickleballers can register for a time and they can um, play pickleball uh, Monday through Wednesday um, until uh, the weather warms up outside and we get them outside. So that's, some, so that's some good news. And then hopefully in April, we will be able to open up our facilities for... So keeping in theme with the slow openings, we're just going to, you know, Step by step, we're going to do, um, you know, new add new things, see how they go, and then add uh, additional new items to our to our list. Um, I have put out a cornhole tournament on our Facebook, so that is scheduled for Saturday, uh, May first. It's uh, fifty dollars a team um, over at Warden Park. So if you guys are interested. Uh, please sign up. It's going to be a pretty fun, quick tournament. It's a just that day, all day tournament, um, guaranteed two games. 
So, um, is there you know, a like recreational say, league and that. a professional league? I need to know. Um, is there a drinking league and a non-drinking league? <laughs> well, it may be a special event permit for that particular event. So we'll have to we'll have to see where that goes. Um, and then uh, the leprechauns should be breaking ground here relatively shortly. Um, the field needs to be dry and uh, with. Besides today, we've had some pretty decent weather, so the fields are starting to get drier in the south there. So they should be breaking down here in the next week or so, um, getting ready for the season. Uh, on June 5th is going to be the opening day, so mark that in your calendars for them. Um, if you actually follow their Facebook page, they already, they already have um, uh, tickets available for sale. So uh, look out for that. Um, Insight went out, so classes, and I think that's all I got. Yeah, just to jump in real quick, I'm sorry, to, uh, to Mike's question, though, the volunteer park cleanup is scheduled for Saturday and Sunday, the April 24th and 25th. So that's perfect. That's the weekend before the cornhole tournament, and hopefully we get somebody to pick up Warden, and it'll look in really good shape for the tournament, right? Yeah, that's it. Always that's thinking, fair. Aaron, always thinking. See, I'm just the, the optimists will take care of their park. I just don't know what day they're going to do it, but you know they'll take care of it. Cool. Yeah, we'll we'll have more coming out on that. Well, that'll be uh, on the social media channels and things. So Saturday, um, May first is the corn thing. That competition. Okay. To recap, April 24th and 25th is the City Park Cleanup Day. May 1st is the Cornhole Tournament. And June 5th is opening day with the Leprechauns. Correct. See, I do listen occasionally. All right. Any other questions for John or Aaron? Although I'm kind of jealous of Aaron's chair in his office. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. All right. Moving on then to items not on the agenda. And I have a list, so I'm, but I'm going to offer it up. Mike, do you have anything? No, I got my one question answered. Okay, perfect. Joe, do you have anything? Maya, do you have anything that was not on the agenda? No, it was already answered. Okay, Commissioner Macy. I can't believe I seen that. No, nothing. I sent my agenda items in early this time. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get there. All right, I had a couple things that I wanted to ask about. Um, I had the B's and the D's reached out to me about getting B's. So I just, they're getting ready to order B's. So I wanted to see where we are with that. I had reached out to a gentleman uh, kind of, I think it was September of last year, who was looking to uh, relocate some bees. And I think he was kind of taken by surprise of how quick we were ready to move on it. So he didn't have any bees to relocate. Um, so, I, I, so, so I think that's good. We can put them um, maybe at Normandy Oaks and the Oak Savannah. Yeah, that'd be a good spot or or even the arboretum maybe yeah i'm thinking the arboretum gonna and as i understand john um it's not expected that the bees from the the gentleman that's um breeding them or whatever you call it uh, i don't think those would be available at all this season i don't think so it might be another following year which is the yeah. bees and the d's thing would be something we'd be interested in and um we would take more information on it okay i will get you more but, information can I, can I ask follow-up, Sarah? Absolutely. So we, I think we had talked about making this like dedicated to Stephanie, right? So yeah. are, we, are we thinking about a fundraiser for that? Like, Yeah, um, do that. I, I think, well, I'm sorry, Sarah, go ahead. Well, I do know that the Bryans, B's in the D, sorry. 
I'll refer to them by their official name, not my friend's name. Bees in the Day, they were going to have them painted, I think, in her honor. So like they were talking about getting the boxes painted. I think we can talk to them more specifically about that. So they were um, good friends with her as well. So they wanted to do something in her honor. Um, I don't know about the cost. I think it's a couple thousand dollars. So we can talk through that. Aaron. Um, yeah, I think you sort of answered it, but if that's the cost, even preliminary costs, now would be the time. Cause if we did want to include that, um, we're preparing budgets right now. Um, I I will confirm the cost. I think it's like 20, I think it's under 2,500. But I will get them to, I will dig out their email and get it to you, Aaron, of their initial cost to put in a couple hives. Cool, thank you. Yeah, no problem. All right, I lost my other stuff. Oh, I have been watching social media and there's been a lot of talk on off-leash dog parks. So I wanted to have a conversation of like, I understand that Mark Twain is off leash for a lot of reasons, but like there seems to be a perception out there that there are other off leash dog parks. And so I guess I want to talk through like, is that the case? And if not, then I think we need to look at a couple of these parks. Like I think Menninger's one, I think Lachman's another, like removing the poop bags and the signage around dog parks, because maybe it's, I don't know how you do city ordinances, but I think that because I've seen a lot of chatter that people are getting as spring heats up, more and more dogs start going to the park and more and more kids are going to the park and that becomes a bad situation. So just wanted to have that conversation as a group. So Sarah, there was, um, I actually was seeing a phone call today from a resident okay. that was at the uh, dog park in the south side of the city. Uh, they don't leave any contact information, but that was her uh, request. That was their request, um, which kind of is funny you mentioned this because there was a um, a sandwich board that was at Mininger Park that said something along the lines of uh, dog run is closed due to seating of the dog run. Uh, please go to Lockman Park and our other parks. Now that sign, as, as I asked some of the DPS guys about that sign, that sign is about 15 years old. Okay. So we had gone out and we had removed <laughs> what we thought was all of the signs saying that this was a dog, like this was not a dog run. So we took all those signs out and it looks like we may have forgotten one. Yeah, so I think that's kind of where, all, where the <laughs> chatter is coming from. Yeah, um, and I think there's a lot of historical knowledge of like what people think are off-leash dog parks. So this may be one of those like little blurbs in the inside on social media of like the only off-leash dog park is Mark Twain. Here's how to sign right. up and become a member. I'm just throwing that out there from an education and awareness perspective. I just wanted to confirm we that we talked about this before too. I, I think yeah. last last yeah. year and it sort of fell off the radar. So thank you for the reminder on it. We'll we'll yeah. Push that out. Yep. Yeah. Again, I just be hesitant. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. The one thing I'd be hesitant about removing the poop bags is I know yeah. uh, a lot of dog owners don't pick up dog poop as it is. So if you were to remove yeah. the poop bags, now you're almost encouraging yeah. them not to pick up the dog poop. Not to say that it happens 100% of the time, but at least- no, I know. That, I think I- that, I think you just- serve as a reminder. I guess, yeah, I do like that, but like, does that create the perception that that becomes an off-leash park or that's a different, I mean, because we don't have poop bags in every park either. So I just, right. I'll leave that to you guys to paint, but I think that conversations need to be had so that we can squash that like there are only, there's only one off-leash dog park and it's membership only. And I just, to help reduce some chatter. Yeah. Okay. I thought my off-leash dogs were coming in to join us, but they are not. Um, and then the only other thing is the AARP task force met. They have a new chair. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I am the new chair of the AARP task force. Um, God help us all. But we are looking to put together a plan. Um, I think Shar Douglas is reaching out to Paul, the city manager, to have a conversation around what that looks like, um, but really taking it in an intentional and impactful 
journey on this to present back to AARP, understanding that it may not be the year that they're looking, completed in the year they're looking for, but we really wanna think through what that looks like from how we can have in-person meetings, how we can do it virtually and really thinking through the contingencies around that. So our next meeting will be at the beginning, our meetings are now the first Monday of the month at seven. So we're back on the cadence, there's a chair and here we go. We're gonna be age friendly eventually. Yes, Melanie. That reminded me something I probably should have put in the commissioner update, although we haven't talked about this as a commission yeah. yet, but my understanding is, is that on April 1st, unless we declare a state of emergency in the city, we return to a face-to-face -face meetings. Um, so just FYI for this and other boards that oh. that's possible. Okay. That's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to push the AARP task force to meet in person quite yet. I'm good. <laughs> Although there are probably lots of them have probably had an opportunity to be vaccinated. That's all I had. Unless there has been one issue that's come up at the dog park, but Aaron, do you want to talk about that? With the, Here, it's our, the airing of the grievances. Yeah, yes. All right. We have some new friends at the dog park that have come up from the next door neighbors. Um, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that's all I'm talking about. I'm not going to get into any other grievances. There is, um, now that we have a new, like before, we obviously had open fields there. Now that there is residents living there, they are presenting a new opportunity for our dogs. Dog, dogs don't just have squirrels, but they have rats to chase as well. And so there is some concern about how we may deal with the rat problem over there because if there's any kind of chemicals used then the dogs get them. So there's a little bit of a, some things going on there. So I don't know if you have any updates, Aaron, of how that's moving forward. No, the concern was, would these rats be poisoned? And I, I'm, I think it's safe to say that there's very few companies that would go out and can't put live traps out for a rat. So yeah, they, they, they would probably poison them more, more than likely. But there were a couple other solutions that I had suggested um, okay. in talking to the owner that, that there's some dumpsters there that if they have rotted out bottoms that might encourage rodents to, to get inside there. And so there's other things that could be done, but um, I think like other times these things crop up and then they move along oftentimes. Yeah. So I think it might be a passing thing. I will hope so. So I appreciate the update and thank you for tackling that and at least trying to look for solutions that don't impact the four-legged friends of bigger four-legged friends than the other four-legged friends. Four-legged <laughs> like enemies. Yes. <laughs> No, actually, I think the dogs like them. They've been catching them for us. So that's super awesome. <laughs> they catch the squirrels too, Mel. So like, they're very, very, very democratic about it. Like they catch the squirrels, they catch the rats. So they're, you know, they do it all. That is all I have for items then on the agenda. All right, moving on. Any last takers for items then on the agenda? All right, John. Bring it home with these upcoming events because they look pretty fantastic. All right, uh, they're pretty self-explanatory, um, but I will go ahead and just list them off. Um, the Irish Tavern is a uh, celebrating St. Patrick's Day one week early, but that will be uh, the meals are given out there on Wednesday, March 10th. Aaron and I will be out there uh, handing out the meals, so uh, if you guys want to say hi, come check us out. Um, <laughs> the uh, Motor City Pastry Pop-Up Meal is on Wednesday, the 24th. Uh, that is a uh, food truck that will be at the Senior Center parking lot. Just do a little uh, pop-up meal for everyone. And then um, we have the uh, excuse me, Easter Cookie Kit Sale going on right now, which is similar to all the other cookie sale kits that we have, Valentine's Day, Christmas. Uh, those are very popular, so get them while they're hot because um, they do sell out of those really fast. Um, so if you're interested in those, sign up for that. And then I guess uh, looking forward to the cornhole tournament on May 1st and then the park cleanup on April. But we'll put those in next week's or next month's agenda as well. Yes, ma'am. 
I just want to show for these three events because um, so Irish Tavern, I just was just yesterday, I had a friend telling me that they they had like this really awesome um, shepherd's pie and you get like this big tray of it and it's delicious and um, that everyone should go get that. And the Motor City Pasties, I know the owner of this, his son is in class with my son. So we have been the recipients of some of these in the past and they are delicious too. Even if you're not a native youper, you can enjoy. And um, I have ordered the cookie kits. I think I've ordered at least 10 of the cookie kits. Both times they've been, they've been out there because they are so delicious. They're sugar cookies. That you, then you have all these sprinkles on them. And it's not good for my waistline, but they taste delicious. And they make a great gift. So I encourage everyone to participate in these three. All right. That was some amazing marketing and advertising. Like you can't, can't beat that. Such endorsements. All right. With that, I'm gonna to have to say that at 8.31, we are ready to adjourn. And that is the quickest meeting we've Parks and Rec Senior Ser Services Advisory Board we've had since we've reconvened. So let's take advantage of the extra 30 minutes. We will not keep Mike up past his bedtime this tonight. So we <laughs> so that's exciting. He's gonna have 29 minutes before he has to get ready for bed. So let's do this, you guys. Does anyone want to make a motion? I move to adjourn. <laughs> All right, motion to adjourn. Maya seconded. I'll do roll call for us, starting at the top. Commissioner Macy. Yes. Joe. Yes. Mike. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Maya. Yes. And I as well. So and everyone enjoy their evening that unanimously passed. Nice to see all of you virtually, and we look forward to seeing talking to you soon. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Bye. Bye. Yeah.